San Antonio police trying to track down the person who shot a man while he was standing inside a Northwest Side home. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. We are following that developing story in San Jose, California. Several people are hurt after a shooting at a rail yard. The Associated Press is also reporting that multiple people have been killed. Santa Clara County Sheriff's spokesman has not said how many people were hurt or killed. The shooting took place early this morning at an area that stores trains and has a maintenance yard. Deputies say the suspect is dead, but it's not clear how he died. An 18 year old now recovering this morning after he was shot while standing inside his northwest side home last night. Dozens of bullets riddled the home in the 7200 block of Hardesty near Loop 1604 and Shanefield Road. Sarah Costa shows us the damage to the home and what police are now saying about this drive by shooting. Multiple bullet holes through the front windows and even vehicle of this home. Investigators say they found at least 40 rifle shell casings in the front of this northwest side home after it had been shot up during a drive by shooting last night. When they arrived at the home on Hardesty around 1130 last night, they found an 18 year old man laying on the ground in the front room of the house with two gunshot wounds to his back. He was taken to University Hospital in stable condition, but he wasn't the only one home when the house was shot up. Five other people were inside and told police they could see all of those bullets flying through the house. Now that the sun is up, you can really see all of those bullet holes in this home and that car parked in the driveway. Officers say that some of those bullets went through this house and into the home behind it. The others who were inside told police they don't know why their home was shot up or didn't see the vehicle that took off. Police say they continue to investigate as they search for more information on a suspect or suspects. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Also new at noon, a federal judge sent his 27 year old former San Antonio police officer Sebastian Torres to eight years in federal prison. He was facing charges related to the sexual exploitation of children. Police Torres pled guilty to one count of distribution of obscene visual representations of the sexual abuse of children. And he admitted he sent numerous obscene depictions of young children being sexually assaulted to another person. Torres was with the SAPD for two years. New details this noon on a shooting investigation that police are now releasing more information about. It is a potential suspect vehicle. According to officers, the investigation began last night at the Hidden Lake Trailer Park at the intersection of St. Haven and Saints Arc. That's on the east side. Police say that someone at the park found the victim dead with gunshot wounds to his head. Police say the victim is either in his 20s or 30s, but that's all we know about him. Officers are short on details when it comes to the suspect as well, but they can tell us that a dark colored sedan was seen in the area and the driver may have been seen leaving that scene. Police still trying to find a suspect who they say stole a car at gunpoint on the city's southwest side. Here's a look at that person officers are looking for. According to SAPD, back on May 16th, the suspect walked up to the victim's vehicle it was at the intersection of West Winnipeg and Humboldt Avenue, and that's when police say the suspect pulled out a gun, demanded that the two people inside the vehicle get out. Officers tell us the suspect took off in that stolen car. If you know who that person is or where police can find him, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And this noon, we know more about a man who was hit and killed by a driver on the northeast side last night. Police say that he was 63 years old and may have been homeless. According to officers, the man was crossing Perrin Beidle Road not too far from Wurzbach Parkway at Loop 410. That's when a driver in a red car hit him, then just kept on driving. The victim pronounced dead at the scene. Officers are looking for the driver involved. They believe that person's vehicle does have front end damage. Anyone with information is being asked to call SAPD at 210-207-7273. The clock is ticking for millions of Americans who have gotten behind on their rent payments during the pandemic. The federal moratorium on evictions is set to expire June 30th, and it's facing new legal challenges in court. The government is now racing to allocate more than $40 billion in emergency rental assistance to those in need as landlords try to keep their businesses afloat as well. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the story. Okay. Before the pandemic, single mother of two, Tania Rogers, says she had never missed a rent payment. When the pandemic hit, my job was essentially um, cut short. 
Roger's paychecks stopped coming, but the rent checks kept piling up. So you're about $6,000 behind on rent mm -hmm. right now. It doesn't feel good. I mean, I'll be real, it doesn't feel good. A federal moratorium on evictions has kept millions of Americans in their homes during the pandemic. It was first passed last spring as part of the CARES Act and was extended by the CDC until June 30th. Earlier this month, a federal judge ruled the eviction ban was unconstitutional. But after an appeal from the Biden administration, the judge said the eviction freeze can temporarily stay in place. We knew from the beginning that the moratoriums were just a Band-Aid approach to being able to protect renters during the crisis. Advocates say the eviction ban has been critical for public health, but it's not foolproof. Researchers at Princeton tracking five states and 28 cities found landlords have still filed for more than 337,000 evictions during the pandemic. It's been horrible. Dean Hunter is an advocate for a small landlord's group in Washington, D.C. He supported the moratorium at the onset, but he says the ongoing ban now risks putting small landlords out of business. There's a narrative that all landlords are, are, are multimillionaires and, 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 and large corporations. But it's just not true. Hunter says the D.C. and federal governments should steer their efforts toward the more than $40 billion in federal aid passed since December for both renters and landlords. The government, frankly, is not doing enough to get the tenants to apply. Where are the TV commercials? Where are the bus ads? Some argue rental assistance should be permanently expanded. The 10 million or so renter families who were struggling so mightily to pay the rent before the pandemic they will continue to struggle to pay the rent after the pandemic unless and until Congress invests in the long-term solutions that are needed. Tania Rogers says she's hopeful the pandemic has created an opportunity to find those long-term solutions to keep families like hers in their homes. I feel strong that even if the moratorium was to end in some form, fashion or way, things will work out, you know, and that could be just me purely walking off with faith. And I'm okay with saying that. Elizabeth Schulze, that. ABC News, Sorry. Washington. <laughs> it's a topic that we've tried to spotlight here at KSAT 12 throughout the pandemic, mental health. Today, Myra Arthur is hosting a KSAT Community Virtual Town Hall. She'll be joined by four expert panelists, and they'll be diving into things like dealing with depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. It's happening at 7 p.m. today. You can watch it on KSAT.com and on the KSAT TV streaming, la uh, streaming app, that is. It's available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, and Roku. Meals on Wheels has been busy during the pandemic, providing for those in need in our community. And this morning, the organization was able to break ground on a brand new facility, which will enable it to help even more people. The $8.9 million campus will serve as a distribution center. With this facility, Meals on Wheels San Antonio will be able to double the number of people that can serve in our community. So far, $8 million has been raised to help with the building of that campus, but more is needed. It's exciting that uh, they've been able to raise over eight million dollars already. There's a little, there, there's a few million dollars that is still yet to be raised, really, to pay for this investment. That's important. So, we're asking the community, we're thanking the donors that have donated, you know, to date, but we're also asking the community to, you know, to contribute to the project because it's something that's so important for the seniors and for San Antonio. If you want to help Meals on Wheels reach its goal, you can go to mowsatx.org slash time to deliver. The website is up on your screen right there. We also have the link on our website, ksat.com. Lots of clouds this morning. We will see some sun this afternoon. Very hot, very humid. That'll be the case going into the weekend, too. Your forecast is coming up. And how bad does the Dallas Cowboy want to change his jersey number? He's willing to pay. We'll tell you how much. It's a lot coming up in sports. Local high school students were able to use their artistic talents to try to raise money for their school. Take a look at how these Edison High School students fared in a national competition. It's after the break. Cryptocurrency, it's a word you may have heard, but do you know what it is and how it works? Many people are still in the dark when it comes to this digital currency. That's why this week's episode of Case That Explains takes a look at Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and even NFTs. 
Episode 32 takes place on the basics, answering questions around the origins, uses, security, and future viability of this technology. You can watch the show online right now on KSET.com or on the KSET TV app that is available. Local students using their creativity to win cash for their school. The Edison High School students now finalists in the Vans Custom Culture competition. This year, the themes were hometown pride and head in the clouds. The Edison art students decorated a few pairs of Vans shoes. Some included San Antonio landmarks like the Alamo and the Riverwalk. Another pair featured Pandulce and handmade embroidery. More than a thousand schools across the country entered the competition and Edison made it up into the top five. The winning school will be announced tomorrow. The top prize is $50,000 for the art program. The runner-up schools are going to get $15,000 each. Are they going to sell those one day? Like, are they're them, just beautiful? Take I don't. Them a pair of shoes and let them fix them up for you. But would you wear them if it, it was a day like this? And... Yeah, today's a nice looking day, isn't it? It's all right. You know, it's a little cloudy, a little, uh, a little humid, very humid actually. And we do have a couple of very, very light showers out there at the moment. The aquifer actually down today, seven tenths of a foot to 668.7 in your pollen count. It's just molds again today that are really the problem, but they're down big time from yesterday, 1,120. We've got some humid weather on the way, a few changes, maybe some rain chances. We'll talk about the forecast coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. We were talking about the shoes today. It might be a good barefoot day. Yeah. Uh, you know, you were saying humidity's on the way. I think it's already here. Oh, no, it's it's here. Okay. It's here, but I, I guess I should rephrase that. It's, yes. It's not going away. <laughs> I mean, it's just here to stay. Get uh, used to it. Oh, man. The humidity is super thick, and uh, we're going to see heat index values today jump into the 90s, so a heads up there. It's also leading to a few very light showers. We'll look at the radar real quick. All of this is very light. I mean, nothing more than a few sprinkles, but we have seen some drizzle and a, a very quick moving shower to make their way through San Antonio. Uh, but we're just not expecting much in the way of rainfall today. If we do see any more significant showers, it's going to be to the east of San Antonio. Take a look at the time lapse. And we had quite a few clouds this morning, a few peaks of sun here and there, but uh, nothing within the last couple of hours. It's been fairly uh, cloudy. 79 degrees, southeasterly winds at 8. And there's the dew point, 72. That is up there. Looking at the satellite picture, looks like we will start to get some sun eventually. We're seeing clouds trying to break up a little bit. Looks like a little boundary came through there, but it's not kicking up showers or anything like that. Uh, we've got thicker clouds off to the west around Hondo. Temperatures there, 79. 83 in New Braunfels, where the sun is out. 80 in Seguin, 81 Randolph, and 81 out at Port S.A. Clouds are definitely thicker west of San Antonio. So Uvalde, you're still cloudy, 78. Still quite a few clouds in Del Rio, 82. The sun's out, Kennedy, Gonzales, Victoria, where we're in the mid 80s this afternoon. On top of these wild dew points in the mid 70s, I mean, this is no fun. Uh, we're very much in the oppressive category. And because we have so much moisture in the soil, this is going to stick around for a while, uh, probably into the weekend. And, and looking at the state, We've got uh, dew points actually pretty high all the way out in the West Texas, so that's interesting to see. You've got to go all the way out to New Mexico before you hit the dry air. Dew point in Albuquerque is four. That's bone dry, but uh, it's staying out there in New Mexico. The most of Texas is going to stay in this humid pattern, and that is allowing for some heat indices. So, yes, we'll get up around 89 degrees today, but it'll feel like 94 here in town. It'll feel like 104 in Laredo. Most places here in Texas will see heat index values above 90. Uh, looking at the satellite picture, again, clouds up around Austin. We had that uh, cloud deck off to the west of San Antonio, as we showed you. And then uh, as we zoom out, you'll notice there's not a lot of rain here in Texas. We're kind of in between storm systems as it stands right now. But going forward in time, uh, we will see a couple of showers mainly east of San Antonio today. And then tomorrow, uh, some storms may try to develop out in west Texas. Shouldn't affect us. As we get into Friday, there is a little bit more energy that works in across North Texas. This little system comes in 
north of the ridge. And that should kick off some showers and storms for north Texas, north central Texas. What we'll need to watch are any outflow boundaries that try to sink south into our area. That could kick off some storms Friday night into Saturday morning. We'll also watch for a couple clusters of storms. Sometimes those can work south into our area. So that's the first thing we'll watch. And then Saturday afternoon, there could be a few isolated storms too. How about Memorial Day weekend? As we observe uh, the Memorial Day weekend, temperatures will be in the 80s Saturday, uh, Sunday 86, and then there is a 20% chance of a shower or storm on Monday. But I think it's mainly going to be west of San Antonio and that chance we mentioned on Saturday. So all in all, the weekend looks pretty good if you have plans to be uh, out and about or have outdoor plans. But th there is that slight chance of Friday night, Saturday, and then again on Monday. We've also added in some chances uh, Tuesday, 30% chance, chance there. And then I think as we get into the middle part of next week, it could get a little more active, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Hey, the Cowboys working out. We see Dak on the field at practice for the first time since his injury. And the Spurs missed the playoffs, but not because one player didn't have an incredible year. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Hey, can the Cowboys not go a day of practice without some kind of controversy breaking out? Jalen Smith has decided to wear a different number. And it will cause a controversy, and it will cost him some cash. Thanks to a new NFL policy that goes to effect this year, Smith is switching his jersey number from 54 to 9. He's worn 9 since he was 9, but it is also the same number, remember, worn by former Cowboy quarterback Tony Romo, an undrafted free agent that went on to become a four-time Pro Bowl, setting all kinds of team passing records for the Cowboys. But here's the catch. In order for Smith to make the switch, He's required by the NFL rule to buy out all of the remaining merchandise attached to him wearing a number 54, or in this case, about a half a million dollars worth. What was Tony's reaction when Jalen spoke with Romo about that number switch? Honestly, me and, uh, me and Tony, we're working on conversations right now. Uh, nothing but love. Uh, he's, he's a busy guy. <laughs> nothing but love and my new number. It was the rookie camp last week. This week, the Cowboys opened their organized team activities, and there he is. Dak is back. Dak Prescott threw his first pass on the field in his first official practice since he was carried off the field back on October the 11th with a compound fracture of his right ankle, not knowing if he would ever be able to play again. Now, 225 days later, he's throwing passes to open the Cowboys organized team activities. But are there any restrictions on his return? No, I wouldn't say I'm um, necessarily limited. I think we're just being cautious and uh, being smart in the fact of I'm um, not doing things when there's a pass rush or, or guys, you know, potentially falling at the legs or so or something of that nature. But um, as far as saying I can't do drills or I can't do something, uh, I'm pretty much full go. Looks like he had on some high tops, didn't he? While Dak is back, Deshaun is a no-show at the Houston Texans organized team activities. No surprise, since he told us he was not going to participate, still demanding a trade after he felt he was slighted in the hiring of a new general manager. But his trade demands have fallen on deaf ears for the time being, since he is still facing 22 civil lawsuits claiming sexual assault and misconduct. And today we learned through his attorney, Rusty Harden, that Watson cannot be deposed on these cases before February 22nd of 2022. <laughs> Hey, Spurs guard DeJounte Murray knows exactly what he's going to do this offseason, and he's letting us know what that is. That's after his career year that included five triple doubles just two seasons after suffering that torn anterior cruciate ligament that forced him to miss the entire season of 2018-2019. He scored several career highs this year, 15.7 points a game, 31.9 minutes a game, 7.1 rebounds, and 5.4 assists a game. Great numbers. Unfortunately, the Spurs failed to make the playoffs for the second straight season for the first time in franchise history. DJ asked what will it mean to him and his young teammates to have a full offseason since the pandemic began. I'm going to be around San Antonio. You know, I'm going to make sure uh, I'm helping, I'm working out, uh, you know, around them, building that, that brotherhood off the floor, you know, doing fun things. And it's going to be really important, you know, because we want to build, you know, good habits and winning habits. Uh, I'm not a loser. I'm pretty sure none of them like losing. So uh, the only thing is to, you know, get after it uh, on and off the floor and build something great. All right, the Charlotte Hornets have won the tiebreaker with the Spurs with a random drawing for the upcoming NBA draft lottery. It happened yesterday. Both teams finished tied 
for 11th with the 39 and 39 record. Now the Spurs order is 12th for the time being, and that's a 1.7% chance to get the top pick, but they still get another young guy early in the draft. Hey, the Justin Rockets softball team is headed to the Class 6A Region 4 Finals for the first time in school history. That's where they face Austin Bowie and Buda starting on Thursday night. They were able to post back-to-back -back wins on Saturday after O'Connor had jumped on the Rockets in Game 1 last Friday 9-2. They forced a third and decided game after beating the Panthers 12-11 in Game 2 and then rallied to route O'Connor 12-0 in Game 3 thanks in part to a Grand Slam homer by Texas A&M commit Keely Williams in the 8th run fifth inning and after playing on three different fields in the semifinals it's down to one neutral site for the regional finals it was just really important you know we were really excited to win especially because it's the first time in Judson softball history that we have um, gone this far we're gonna try to be the best that we can be with all our skills and talents and we're just, you're going to see a lot of smiling on the field. Their experience, they've had experience going to the state tournament, um, and they're just, um, well, I mean, they're going to play um, the game the way it's supposed to be played. They're not going to make many mistakes, and you're just going to have to go out and execute. Good luck to the young ladies. Game one, Thursday, 7 o'clock in Butte. Yeah, we'll be rooting for them. Yep. New today at 5, break out the lawn tools. It quit raining for the most part, so it's gardening season. Recent rain may have your grass ready for good grooming, and if your current tools just aren't cutting it, you might consider a replacement. The swap you can make that will also help the environment. It's Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. We are continuing to follow this developing story in San Jose, California. A number of people have hurt after a shooting at a rail yard and the Associated Press still reporting that multiple people are killed. Santa Clara County Sheriff's spokesman has not said how many people were hurt or killed. The shooting took place early this morning at an area that stores trains and has a maintenance yard. Deputies say the suspect is dead, but it's not clear how he died. Now to the latest in the criminal investigation into the Trump Organization. Former President Donald Trump and high-ranking employees, possibly including his adult children. ABC's Rita Roy has more. The nearly two-year-long criminal investigation into former President Trump's business dealings now intensifying. A special grand jury has been seated by the Manhattan District Attorney to consider evidence and ultimately decide if the Trump Organization, Trump himself, his family, or employees have committed crimes. The DA launched the investigation based on the congressional testimony of Trump's former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen. To your knowledge, did the president or his company ever inflate assets or revenues? Yes. And uh, was that done with the president's knowledge or direction? Everything was done with the knowledge and at the direction of Mr. Trump. Grand juries are secret, but the investigation is believed to be looking into Trump's tax returns and whether he overvalued his properties to obtain bank loans and deflated the value of those same properties to pay lower taxes. ABC News has learned prosecutors have already contacted witnesses to appear before the special grand jury, which will reportedly be meeting three days a week for up to six months. Experts say the move suggests prosecutors feel they have evidence of a crime and are preparing to move forward. The former president releasing a statement calling the new developments a witch hunt, saying in part, this is purely political and an affront to the almost 75 million voters who supported me in the presidential election. And it's being driven by highly partisan Democratic prosecutors. New York Attorney General Letitia James has also joined forces with the DA's office. Our civil investigation continues, but we are now actively investigating the Trump Organization in a criminal capacity. While we don't know if he's been subpoenaed to testify, a big focus for the special grand jury could be the Trump Organization's chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, who's also under criminal investigation for possible tax fraud. Prosecutors are reportedly looking to use him as a cooperating witness against Trump and his organization. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Democratic senators still working to create a commission on the January 6th insurrection. Talks started yesterday on potential changes to the commission in efforts to get more Republicans on board, but they are still expected to block the vote. The proposed commission will have 10 members equally split between Democrats and Republicans. However, many Republicans have said they still don't trust this will be a bipartisan effort. They also want assurances that the investigation won't stretch into 2022. 
According to the CDC, 50% of Americans are now fully vaccinated, and that adds up to more than 130 million Americans. 25 states fully vaccinated 50% or more of their adults, and nine have crossed the threshold with 70% vaccinated. New data from the CDC shows only 0.01% of fully vaccinated Americans experience the so-called breakthrough infection. That's just one out of every 10,000 people. And if they do happen, most are protected from severe illness. However, the CDC does have a warning ahead of the upcoming Memorial Day weekend when people are more likely to gather. If you are not vaccinated, our guidance has not changed for you. You remain at risk of infection. You still need to mask and take other precautions. President Biden says that he wants 70 percent of all U.S. adults to receive at least one vaccine dose by July 4th. Right now, the country is just about 10 percent away from achieving that goal. The World Health Organization says COVID-19 cases are down 14 percent worldwide. It says deaths are down 2 percent. According to the WHO, the European region is reporting the biggest decline. Despite the global drop, the organization notes that cases and deaths still remain high in some countries. A top Japanese newspaper now calling for the Olympic Games to be canceled due to the pandemic. This paper also an official partner of the Tokyo Olympic Games. In an editorial that was published a short time ago, they called for the prime minister to, quote, calmly and objectively assess the situation and decide whether to cancel the event. But the paper also accused the prime minister of putting on the games against the will of the public. It's another major blow for Olympic organizers who've been under intense pressure for weeks now to cancel the games. The president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, defending his decision to tell a passenger jet to land in his country. That decision sparking concern and controversy with many European allies demanding action. ABC's Mary Alice Parks has the story. Increasingly cut off from the rest of Europe, facing swift and severe condemnation, Belarus's authoritarian leader Alexander Lukashenko defiant and seemingly undeterred. Speaking for the first time in the face of growing sanctions, Lukashenko pointing fingers at the West and spreading his own wild theories, denying any wrongdoing in what's being called a state-sponsored hijacking. Saying ill-wishers from outside the country and from inside the country changed their methods of attack have crossed many red lines. Lukashenko's remarks coming after the voices of air traffic controllers in Belarus telling the pilots of a Ryanair flight to divert to Minsk, the capital city, released this week. For security reasons, we recommend you to land and uniform. The pilots asking questions. The air traffic controllers insistent. Uh, from where did it come from? Where did you uh, find the information about it from? Airport security staff uh, informed they received email. Grounded and searched, it was quickly clear there was no bomb on board. But local authorities were waiting and took activist and journalist Roman Protasevich and his girlfriend into custody. The 26-year-old helped in organizing opposition against Lukashenko, who's been in power since 1994. The government releasing videos of Protasevich and his girlfriend in detention, concerns raising that they were forced to speak under duress. Protasevich's mother pleading for her son's life. They will kill him, she says. I ask with a mother's tears, help me save him. EU leaders have banned some Belarusian planes from using their airspace. And yesterday, President Biden confirming that the U.S. is also considering sanctions and saying that he will address this situation when he meets with Russian President Vladimir Putin next month. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. Let's get outside with live cam. Ooh, some cloud. Where did, it was sunny a second ago, wasn't it? Or was I sleeping through that? Not really. No. <laughs> okay. Yesterday we had some sun. The clouds are wow. back. But yeah. is there any rain with those clouds? Uh, you know what? Uh, not much. But at uh, first look at the satellite picture, you, you don't see much. But there is a few very light showers mixed in there. So you look at this. Uh, it just looks like cloud cover. But we zoom in here to Bear County. You can see one or two little very quick moving showers. I mean, this amounts to nothing more than a few sprinkles, honestly. Uh, but we may see a little bit more of this before we do get some breaks in these clouds and the sun pops out a little later this afternoon. Also seeing a few showers down there around Goliad. Otherwise, uh, we are just not looking for much in the way of rain today. Temperature wise, 79 at the airport, 78 Kerrville, 80 at Hondo, 86 Pleasanton.
87 down there in Catula where the sun is out. And looking at the forecast for today, we'll uh, see those temperatures climb to near 90 this afternoon. Just an outside chance for shower to southeast Julie winds 5 to 15. And then uh, dry conditions tomorrow too. Few changes on the forecast Friday into Saturday. Take a look at that coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. In a push to get more young people vaccinated, the federal government is teaming up with Snapchat and what they're doing on the social media app to reach out to youngsters. And Instagram is rolling out a new feature that allows users to hide live on a post. What the social media site hopes to accomplish with that change. In your consumer news today, Facebook now blaming foreign influences for most of the false information shared on its platform. In a report published today, the social media site said Russia, Iran, Myanmar are the top sources of misinformation. But the U.S. didn't innocent. As the report notes, the states are the fourth biggest source of misinformation on the website. Online shopping giant Amazon bought MGM Studios today, the studio behind properties such as the James Bond series and Shark Tank. Amazon paid just over $8 billion for the studio. The deal is the latest in Amazon's goal to compete against Netflix and Disney, Disney Plus that is, with their video streaming service, Amazon Prime. This is the company's second largest acquisition since they bought Whole Foods for $14 billion in 2017. The White House teaming up with Snapchat to try to convince younger Americans to get COVID vaccines. The app launched an augmented reality lens that mimics a phone call with President Joe Biden in which the president says COVID variants are impacting young people and getting vaccinated can help them protect their families. The new lens also features calls with Vice President Kamala Harris and Dr. Anthony Fauci and a viral immunologist. A big update to another popular social media app. Instagram will now allow users to hide the amount of likes they're getting on their posts. Hmm. The change comes after concerns that users might get too caught up in the numbers, fixating on a number of likes and hurting their own self image. The goal is to make the app feel less like a popularity contest. I think that if we can focus then more on the message that we're provided by the posts, right, the content of the posts as opposed to checking the likes, I think that can really shift that, that idea of popularity contest. And of course, this change might not be for everyone. Users will still be given the option to see how many likes their posts are getting. The app has been testing this new likeless, that's a weird word, likeless system, system since 2019. And that update's gonna start rolling out this week. It's the, it's the internet and social media. There's yeah. All these tiny new words out there. Do you like this weather? <laughs> I can only wish to have as many likes as you guys do on your oh. social media. Uh, no, oh, it's human this. out there. Uh, it, it's so humid out there. We've got a lot of cloud cover. 79 degrees so far today. 73 was a low this morning. So not a big spread there because of the cloud cover, but the sun should pop out later this afternoon, and that'll boost temperatures close to average. The record is 100. That was set back in 1989. We'll take a look ahead to the weekend coming up. So I did some research a while ago. I Googled it. June 20th is the first day of summer, which means we're like knocking on the door with these temperatures. Yeah. We're getting there, aren't we? We are. But we haven't seen any triple digits yet. Oh, well, Thank you very much that. for that. <laughs> uh, it feels like it's almost in triple digits out there. It has been very humid, but uh, the rain has helped keep temperatures down so far this month. One other thing it's helped to do is boost the aquifer. Now it's down today. It's down 7 tenths of a foot to 666.8, but that's a good number. It's above average. And since April 28th, we're up about 17 feet. That has uh, done a lot to, to help us out, uh, help pumpers and all that sort of thing. We're back into year round watering as well. Uh, as we look at the radar, uh, there are some light showers out there. We've been tracking, I mean, really light. They don't last very long. Tracking north, it's nothing more than a couple sprinkles, but don't be surprised if you have to use your windshield wipers briefly. And then we have a couple more showers down around Goliad. 
but this is not the not the active radar that we've seen over the last week or so. We don't expect it to be today. Here's what you can expect. Uh, just uh, some sprinkles. We will see some clearing a little bit later. There could be a shower east of I-35. Quiet, warm and humid coming up tomorrow and Friday. And then by the weekend, there will be a chance for showers and storms. Friday night and Saturday is kind of a time frame we want to watch. And then perhaps again, as we get into Memorial Day, there is an outside chance of some rain. 79 Comfort, 78 Kerrville, 85 already in New Braunfels, where there has been some sun today. 85 in Pleasanton, 82 right now in Divine. And uh, still in the 70s, Rock Springs to Kerrville. Clouds are pretty thick there. So it's going to take longer for the temperatures to warm up uh, there across the hill country. Dew points. We've been talking about it all morning in the 70s area wide. This is very thick, humid air, and uh, that's pushing heat index values. Well, they're already up there, but uh, we'll be in the mid 90s this afternoon. That's what it will feel like. That's not the air temperature, but that's what it will feel like. And that will also be the case. Uh, actually, we'll get triple di digits down around Eagle Pass, Creosa Springs, and Katua. Uh, so some pretty significant heat indices uh, later this afternoon. And then as we look at the uh, satellite and radar, and this is up around Kansas. This is the area today that's going to get a lot of severe weather well to our north, but already starting to see a few severe storms popping there in western parts of Kansas, and they'll be under the gun this afternoon. For us, uh, just some cloud cover, and it is that cloud the deck is starting to shrink a little bit, and we will get the uh, partly cloudy skies uh, later today. Here's what the computer model is showing. Couple showers this afternoon off to the east, and then tomorrow some showers and storms lining up uh, around west Texas, but not so much here. I think they stay west of us. But on Friday, as that disturbance sort of rolls around our ridge of high pressure, we'll get more activity up across North Texas, and we have to watch this because if it can throw down some outflow boundaries, they may push south. In addition, we could get a cluster of storms that develop that pushes into the area Saturday morning. Chances of that happening. As it stands right now, fairly low, but it is a scenario we would need to watch. And then as we get into the day Saturday, there will be some more chances for some isolated showers and storms. So 20% chance mainly after the east today, 90 tomorrow, 90 on Friday, 20% chance Friday night into Saturday, 88 degrees, 86 on Sunday right now, mostly cloudy. And then a 20% chance of some storms mainly off to the west on Monday. It does look to become more active middle part of next week uh, with some more showers and storms. So we're not into that summer like pattern yet. Uh, as it stays still looks like pretty active, guys. We'll be right back. This senior at the Henry Ford Academy loves to perform on stage and hopes to do just that on Broadway or even the big screen one day. Sarah Costa introduces us to a great graduate named Jessica Willis, who didn't let the COVID-19 pandemic destroy her dream of performing. High school senior Jessica Willis says she has always had a big personality and has always loved the arts and performing. She says that passion for wanting to be on the stage grew while studying musical theater at Henry Ford Academy. Coming here and taking theater classes has um, really made me just kind of like feel confident in myself and what I'm doing. And it's something that I really love doing no matter where I'm at. But the HFA theater program has been put on hold for over a year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Jessica says it was heartbreaking to miss out on performing her senior year of high school. It is kind of sad that I can't like really obviously go out and like perform in front of a lot of people. But um, doing Zoom auditions and stuff was something I had to navigate and work around. But she didn't let the pandemic crush her dream of pursuing acting. She continued to work on her skills at home and audition virtually. That's what landed her scholarships to Texas Christian University in Fort Worth next semester to study musical theater. Obviously, like in my head, like my big like pipe dream would probably be like either Broadway or um, like TV or movies and stuff. She says the 100th Oscars is in seven years and she'll be 25 by then. She says if she can make it there, it would be a lifetime dream. But she says she just wants to be able to tell other people's stories in the future and that would make her the most happy. Just as long as I'm still performing in front of people, like no matter how big the crowd is and that I'm just being genuinely myself, I think that's the best goal for me in 10 years. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 
We want to bring you the latest on the shooting in San Jose, California. We have gotten an update. The Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office now says that nine people were killed, including the shooter there. The shooting took place early this morning at an area that stores trains and has a maintenance yard. Right now, law enforcement is still searching the area after getting reports there could be explosive devices there. There's not a lot of information about the suspect other than he was an employee of the Valley Transit Authority. We will bring you the latest as we get more information. Meantime, we're going to head downtown to Market Square and SA Live. Hi, we, hey, it is an Ice Age dinosaur dig here. SA Live on Ice. <laughs> Coming to a city near you. Yes, author Christy Cuthbert is here with some great summer games and ideas for you and the kids to enjoy. What are we doing? We are doing an Ice Age dinosaur fun. dig. Uh, frozen bowl of water with some dollar store dinosaurs in there. We'll keep your kids busy for an hour. And oh my gosh, I'm almost to it. And the adults too. And yeah. Mischief Makers, uh, she's got a book series. We are going to tell you all about that. This is so much fun here. Hey, I'm going to go up to Bernie and a great restaurant up there called the Dodging Duck. And Jen is going to take us there and tell us all about that. Of course, this is Wednesday. Yes. So you know what Wednesday is? It's hump day. So we have a camel here. Emily Jaffe, tell us one quick bit about who, so we, who we have here. This is Katarina. She lives at Animal World and Snake Farm Zoo. Uh, she's a dromedary camel, which means she's got one hump. 40, 40, 40. 40, 40, 40. They can live to be up to 40 years old, run up to 40 miles an hour, and drink 40 gallons of water in one sitting. More on that. <laughs> a lot of great exotics coming up on SA Live.